Claudia Conway, Kellyanne Conway's daughter, blasted Donald Trump during an appearance on her mother's program on Fox News Nation. Let's watch. The way that Donald Trump is talking about abortion, the highly, a highly contested issue with my generation. He's saying that people are executing babies after they're born or that women are having abortions in the ninth month. No, they're not. Nobody's doing that. That's not a thing. Young people, tens of millions of people tuned into the debate and a lot of young people. I know all of my friends were watching, friends who aren't involved in politics, who don't know much. They were watching and they see our former president, you know, use this aggressive jargon and also our vice president, you know, this kind of back and forth way of speaking, which is like hateful and nasty. And people are tired of it. People are tired of it. My generation is tired of it. Mom Kellyanne, a former advisor to President Donald Trump, pushed back on her daughter in terms of Kamala Harris's likability with younger voters. Here's what Claudia had to say in response. I'm not here to, you know, venerate any political candidate. It's a good word. But but that we are looking at this as kind of like, okay, she's pivoting a little bit from Biden's policies and she can, you know, counteract Trump's policies and the way that she presented herself herself in the debate kind of solidified people's support of her. And I look at Kamala Harris and I don't see a perfect person. I don't see a perfect leader, but I do see change. I do see moving forward, you know, and I'm not one for identity politics, but it would be nice to have a woman in the White House. I'm glad to see them getting along, I guess, because this was a rocky family situation. Uh, Kellyanne's former husband, mother, uh, father to Claudia, George Conway, is this avowed never Trump figure. Um, Kellyanne was obviously a member of the Trump team. There, it was very bitter and divisive and acrimonious and like spilled out onto social media with Claudia, who was who is a, I think she's 19 now, she was underage yeah. at the time, she was very young. It seemed like it was a traumatizing thing, just not a good family situation or thing for a young person to have parents who were high profile, very against each other, and then she was kind of getting pulled into it, and it was just all very messy and ugly, and I, did, I, I, I felt, I didn't want to be involved or have any, this level of knowledge of any family's interpersonal drama, so I, I'm glad to see there. They're chatting. She, she was emancipated, too. I mean, the whole thing was wild. I didn't think it was real for a bit. I thought it was just an act between Kellyanne and George Conway online, and they were going to have You almost had to show. think it was that, but it I was I really sincere. did. I thought it was like a... Like Carville, Carville and Madeline. Exactly. Or and then it went totally off, off the rails. Like, her live streams when her mom stole the phone. I mean, they needed a reality show if it weren't so tragic. It was... So I'm glad that... Uh, yeah, yeah it was hard to watch. Um, a, a couple of years after all of this went down, Claudia Conway actually appeared on American Idol. She auditioned, and Kellyanne was there for the audition. So they had apparently reconciled at that point. Um, mm. Unfortunately, she didn't make it very far in the show. But now I'm told by some reliable sources that Kellyanne might be trying to angle to get Claudia some kind of job, whether at Fox or in broadcast media more generally. Mm. Um, there are a couple of things she said during her comments that weren't quite right. I mean, she says that nobody gets third trimester abortions and that admits that actually a small percentage do. And when Trump is talking about executing babies after birth, he's using a euphemism for failing to provide care to babies who survive abortions, which sadly does happen. Um, I've interviewed an abortion survivor before who was, uh, her mother had a chemical abortion she ended up surviving, and um, they had basically like thrown her in a closet so they couldn't hear her crying oh, as she God. died. And a nurse just got this overwhelming sense of like moral clarity and decided to save the baby. Um, Democrats have voted every single time against the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Act, which would require doctors to provide care to those children. And in Virginia, there was this infamous clip that Trump referenced during the debate where Governor Ralph Northam was talking about this bill sponsored by Delegate Kathy Tran and described how basically the doctor would keep the baby comfortable while a conversation ensued between the mom and doctor mm -hmm. insinuating that they would get to decide whether that baby lived or died. You know, that's all moving and there are, I'm sure, unique cases, but there are plenty of cases where women are not able to 
access abortion in life-threatening situations um, as, as life-threatening as an ectopic pregnancy where they're bleeding out in the driveways, as, as we've heard. I know people personally who've had to go to a different state and then on the way had a medical emergency because they were not able to access just normal health care. We're not even talking about abortion, something that would save their life. And, you know, in some instances, even their baby's life because they have to commit a certain type of surgery that is now, now falls under a form of abortion. So women's health in this country is completely underfunded. It's not researched. And the Republican Party platform is essentially cutting all women's health, uh, not just abortion health. And, and, and that's a political motivation. And, you know, what? If, if, if Conway has a voice on Fox News saying things, pushing back against her mother, I think that's the best thing could have. I found it that she didn't really want to say anything so supportive of Kamala Harris. She was just saying, I don't like Trump, but then she was not saying, but I'm so enthusiastic about Kamala Harris. Because we've been, we've been given this idea lately by the mainstream media that Kamala Harris is just so obviously popular with all young people. And I've wondered to the extent that is manufactured because, you know, this is not someone like Barack Obama who clearly did have this mm -hmm. massive, genuine, uh, grassroots, ground-up popularity with young people, with college students, et cetera. Uh, I, I mean, I have no doubt that Kamala Harris is more popular with young people than Joe Biden was or than Donald Trump is, but th these are low bars to clear. And I think that's what it is. I think when she was swapped in as the candidate, it was like, oh, great, we don't have to vote for Joe Biden anymore. We don't have to vote for the 80-something-year-old who is often stumbling on, on the public stage. And just to address your point about women bleeding out, dying, DNCs are covered under every pro-life law across the country. There's not a single state that outlaws getting uh, removal of fetal tissue during a miscarriage. That's a misconception. But and the problem is, is that the doctors feel that they are under attack right now, that if they were, they're going to lose their license or be arrested. It's and the fact that the, law, the other laws are usurping that law and putting the doctors' livelihoods and, and, and lives, frankly, at risk of saving women. And that's just fundamentally it's bad policy. I have two points on that, because in Texas in particular, where there was this radio host that claimed, came out and claimed that his wife wasn't able to get a DNC for her miscarriage, it explicitly says in the pro-life law that was recently written after the overturning of Roe v. Wade that that is an exception, that women are allowed to get all miscarriage care. And so I think when doctors are saying this, there's three things that are happening. One, they're being persuaded into a false uh, conception based on media coverage or commentary, such as this, the commentary you're giving right now, into thinking that there is confusion under the law about what health care you're allowed to provide to women. Two, they're doing it for political purposes, which would should strip them of their license if they truly withhold care from women to make a political point. I don't think that's what they're doing. I hope not. Or, go or three, they're legitimately confused. And if they are legitimately confused, then they probably shouldn't be doctors either because, again, the laws are incredibly clear. There is should be no confusion between a spontaneous abortion, which refers to a miscarriage, and an intentional abortion. And any doctor who would refuse to provide women with care to remove fetal tissue during a miscarriage, again, shouldn't be practicing medicine. Well, we shouldn't have any of these laws in the books because this is what's making it so hard for doctors to be able to do their basic tasks. I think it's 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 punishing women at, at all levels, and we know what the agenda is. Project 2025 makes it incredibly clear what the agenda is of the broader Republican Party. And, you know, we're sitting here talking about the weeds of really bad laws. And if it were up to most women, and that's statistical, they would not be following the laws that are being passed in these states that are punishing women uh, from from the basic levels of accessing health care and shutting down health care clinics for everything, a breast exam to uh, uh, other sort types of support to abortion laws that are incredibly you know, restrictive. And I'm, I mean, six weeks is very normal. That's standard. A lot of women don't even know that they're pregnant uh, after six weeks. We know how cycles work because it's not it doesn't count from your first period. It counts from when you had your last period, which is possibly, you know, often before uh, intercourse begins. So these are restrictive laws, they're inhumane, and it's really about a greater goal, which is to defund all women's health. Well, there's a lot of consensus, so there's some level of consensus that six weeks is, would be way too early to have a ban, I think, right? Yeah. That's, that's losing well, right. when it's been introduced at the state levels. I, you know, I just, as a, literally in between you guys on this issue, as a kind of moderate, I would leave it, you know, to the states to decide uh, as the law permits now, and the pro-life advocates have to you know, make their argument uh, right. if they're going to win. No, and totally so agree. far, the, it's you know, things that are that restrictive have not won. I would be fine with somewhere in the like 
12, 14, 15 weeks with exceptions um, going forward. And I think that's where probably most Americans are. But that should be, you know, uh, demonstrated state by state. And I think that would be the way to settle this issue. Conway, great talk show. I would love to see that every week. Yeah, well, you can see it on so far on uh, on Fox Nation. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do a mother daughter set or maybe bring in the (laughs) the ex husband, the father at one point. (laughs) I would watch that. Okay, that does it for us this week on Rising. Thank you so much for tuning in, and please let us know if you like the three-person setup. Haven't done that in a while, but some of the old me, Ryan, Kim content was, uh, was the highest quality in my view, so hopefully this was as well. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content, and for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're now available anywhere you can find podcasts, and we'll see you next week.